Hello everyone! Today we are going to create an hexagonal tile pattern procedurally. As usual, let's start by opening Blender and creating a new scene. We can remove the default objects by selecting them all with the A key and then hitting the X key. Now we can add a new grid object and then in the Material tab we assign it a new material. Now we switch to the shading workspace and expand the working area of the 3D view by dragging the top left corner. We do the same for the node editor and then adjust the windows to have a good view and make some room. Now we add a texture coordinate node and then a mapping node. Then we connect the UV output socket to the vector input socket of the mapping node set to operate on texture. Now we add a new linear gradient texture. We connect the output of the mapping node to the input vector of the gradient texture and then we connect the output color of the gradient texture to the base color input of the shader. In the location parameter of the mapping node we type 0.5 for the x and the y coordinate. In this way, we center the gradient on our mesh. Since our node tree will start soon to grow both in size and complexity, to keep order, we select all the nodes in between the input coordinates and the material shader. Then, we tell Blender to make a new group from our selection by clicking Add, Group, Make Group. To create the hexagon that will be the base of our tile pattern, we need to operate with the polar coordinates. To do that, we need to manipulate the X and Y component of the input coordinates and so we drag the output socket of our mapping node to an empty spot and in the search menu that Blender will show us, we type separate and select separate X, Y, Z. In order to calculate the polar angle, we can use the arctan2 function, so we add a new math node and set its operation to arctan2. So we drag the x component of the coordinate to the first socket of the math node and the y component of the coordinate to the second socket of the math node. We could also connect it the other way around, but in this way our angle will start on the x axis instead of the y axis. Since the arctangent function returns values in the range minus pi to positive pi, we need to add 2 pi in order to have positive value and preserve the rotation. To calculate the 2 pi value, we use the math node convert to radians and convert the value 360 degrees. Then we use a new math node to perform the addition. To generate our polygon, we use the modulo function to repeat a sector all around a full circle. And to calculate the angle of an n-sided polygon, we simply divide the full circle by n, or 6 in the case of our hexagon. Now we can feed this value to our modulo function. For now, since we want to cut a slice around the x-axis, we have to subtract half of our angle. We can do that using two new math nodes. To calculate the polar radius, we simply use the vector's length as provided by a new vector math node. Now that we have modified our polar coordinate with our modulo function, we can go back to the Cartesian system using the sinus and cosinus function. With two new math nodes, we multiply these values by the polar radius and combine the result in a new vector. In this way, when we feed this new vector to our gradient texture and use a color ramp with a constant interpolation to filter the results, we will have our new polygon. Now we just need to adjust the scale of our mapping node to properly fit our polygon inside our grid. With some fancy math and the power of editing, we ended up multiplying the scale factor 
by the cosinus of half the center angle. For an hexagon that would be a factor of 0.866, but since we want to generalize, we want to calculate it using these nodes. Now that we made it work for our hexagon, we can drag the empty socket of our input node to create an input parameter to define the number of sides for our generic polygon. If we exit by pressing Tab, we can start testing our new node group. Let's see if it works as intended. Nice! Now we can rename it Polygon. Now we can go back to add a new control variable to regulate the sides of our polygon. As we did before, we simply drag the empty input socket and connect it to the sides slot to automatically create the control variable. And as before, we use the drag method to create the combined XYZ node that we will use to set the rotation of our polygon. Since the rotation vector requires radians and we want to use more easily the angle in degree, we use the node to convert to radians. And then, as we did before, we drag to create the input parameters. Now we can test what we have accomplished so far. So far, so good. Now we can go back and add another two control parameters to specify an offset for our polygon. And as before, we use the drag method to create the combined XYZ node. And then we drag to create the input parameters. Let's see if it works as intended. Excellent! Now that we have our hexagon, in order to create our tile pattern, we have to make it repeat. To do that, we need to manipulate the X and Y component of the input coordinates, and so we click Add, Converter, Separate XYZ. Now we add the Combine XYZ node. We reconnect the X and Y component while we left the Z coordinate to zero, since we don't need it for our 2D texture. Now, to transform the X and the Y component of the coordinates, we use the wrap operation of a math node. We specify zero for the minimum value, and then we do the same for the Y component. Now, to specify the sides of our polygon, we add a new input node of type float. For now, we use this value for both the wrap operations and the sides of the polygon. To calculate the offset, we simply divide the sides by 2. This is good, but to make our tile pattern, we need to specify a step different from the sides both in the x and the y direction. We connect the step value directly to the max parameter of our wrap operation, and then we calculate the new offset, like before, but using the step instead of the sides. Before doing anything else, to keep order in our node, we can create a node group and by using the layout reroad node, we can avoid making duplicate inputs when creating the group. Now we can rename the input parameters and create a new one to control the number of sides of our polygon and another one to expose the rotation. By selecting the input node and pressing tab, we go back. Then we can delete these input variables and test the new node group. Since we want to leave a gap between each tile and we want to be able to specify different colors for adjacent tiles, we will combine four different patterns. In order to do that, we will need to add a mapping node to specify a different offset for each pattern. And as before, we use the drag method to create the combined XYZ node, and then we drag to create the input parameters. Now we can test the new parameters, and since it looks like it works, we can rename the node group to hexagonal tiles and set the number of sides to 6.
it looks like I messed up the X and Y step, so let's go back and fix it. To join the different pattern with different color in a new pattern, we can daisy chain some mix RGB nodes and use the black and white pattern as mixing factor for the mix RGB node. We can copy and paste the node using Ctrl C and Ctrl V, set different colors for the background and for the second tie set. Connect the input vector. And if we specify a different offset for the two pattern, we should see the two different sets of tiles with different colors. Now we need a new input node of type float to specify the size of our tiles. Now we can align the two tile sets along the x-axis by specifying a y offset of 0 and calculate the x offset as the cosinus of a 30 degree angle. That will be something like 0 0.866 but since we want our pattern to repeat without imperfections, it's better to calculate it instead of simply typing it. Now that we have calculated the x offset, we can simply multiply its value by 2 to obtain the proper x step. Now that we have created the first row of tiles, we can copy and daisy chain some more mix RGB nodes to create the second row. As before, we specify a different color. All the parameters, except for the offset, will be the same as the other tile sets. This second row, to be properly aligned, will need only half the value of the X offset of the first row. Now we can add a fourth tile set by daisy chaining another mix RGB node. This tile set will have the same parameters as the third one, except for the X offset that will be negative. Maybe if we reconnect it properly. Excellent! Now that the first and the second row are properly aligned on the X direction, we only need to calculate the Y step and the Y offset. Lucky for us, the Y step can be simply calculated by multiplying the sides by 1.5 and the Y offset is half that value. Let's check how it works. As usual, we use the layout reroute node to make some order and create a new node group. Now that we have made some order, we can rename the input parameter for the sides and, as we did before, we simply drag the empty input socket to automatically create an input variable for each color. Now, to create a gap between the tiles, we add a new math node, we set the operation to subtract, we drag the sides to the first value, and for the second slot, we drag a new variable that we will use to specify the gap. Now, we can use the output of this node to set the size of our tiles. Now, if we go back and specify a sensible number for our gap, we should see a proper tile pattern. As usual, after a quick test, as good practice, we can rename our node group and finally we add the last control parameter for the growth color. Very nice, if I may say so myself. And I think that's all for today. Maybe the next time we will play with the geometry nodes.
बाय बाय